it's no secret that fighting games are sometimes a little... weird. Though combat sports might date back to the days when humans could barely walk upright, watching people beat one another to a bloody pulp is still considered high-quality entertainment in the modern world. Video games do us one better, though. They let us participate in said bloodening from the relative safety of our own homes. Fighting games don't simply deliver players a few violent thrills, though. Generally, they also try to weave something of a narrative about their characters, giving context to their in-game actions in order to raise the emotional stakes a little. However, finding new and interesting reasons for people to engage in organised fighting tournaments doesn't always seem to be easy, because some characters' backstories are pretty off the wall. Some fighting game characters have unexpected motivations that have us scratching our heads, and others barely seem to understand they're in a fighting tournament at all. So we've delved into the annals of gaming history to find the punchy lads, lasses and others with the most bonkers origins. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 of the weirdest character backstories in fighting games. Number 10, Kazuya Mishima, Tekken series. He might arguably be the closest thing to a main character that the Tekken franchise has, but that doesn't make Kazuya Mishima immune to daddy issues. In fact, Kazuya's problems with his father Heihachi essentially serve as a driving force behind Tekken's entire narrative, so the character's backstory is sort of the franchise's too. It also just happens to be absolutely insane. Kazuya's issues with Heihachi are far too involved to delve into here, but when the younger Mishima was just five years old, he confronted Daddy Dearest for murdering his mother. Considering the child too weak to challenge him, Heihachi threw little Kazuya off a cliff to teach him a lesson. Top class parenting, that one. Despite sustaining some horrific injuries, Kazuya survived the fall. Naturally, he grows up as well adjusted as you'd imagine. He dedicates his life to becoming as strong as possible in order to get revenge on his father. This sets Kazuya on a path that ultimately results in him being possessed by the devil entity and becoming Tekken's sort of antagonist. In other words, Kazuya's life is every bit as complicated as you'd imagine, given the massive trauma inflicted upon him as a child. Number 9. Brad Wong, Dead or Alive The Dead or Alive series boasts more than a few colourful characters, but perhaps none of them have a story quite so ridiculous as Brad Wong. A master of the drunken fist style of martial arts, Brad takes his drinking pretty seriously. In fact, he enjoys a tipple more than that uncle that everyone conveniently forgets to invite on the holidays. One day, Brad's teacher, a man named Chen, sends him out to find some wine. Not just any wine, though. Brad must find Genra, the legendary wine of warriors. Being the good student that he is, Brad does as he's told. While out on his quest, Brad stumbles, quite literally because of the alcohol, across the Dead or Alive World Combat Championship. And deciding, for some reason, that it might help him find his magic wine, Brad enters. And that's about all the context that Dead or Alive offers for why Brad Wong is taking part in the world's biggest martial arts competition. We're not going to be too hard on Brad for this one, because in fairness, how many of us haven't got sidetracked after a few drinks? Facing off against the world's greatest fighters just because you can't find the right wine is maybe a tad excessive, but it's also what makes Brad's story so unique. Number 8. TJ Combo – Killer Instinct Now, I'm no sports expert, but I do know that cheating is a much bigger deal for athletes than it is in video games. Although I haven't personally checked every rulebook out there, I'm pretty sure that cybernetic implants are definitely not okay in most sports. Killer Instinct's TJ Combo might have the perfect name for a fighting game character, but his morals were once a bit iffy. In order to keep his championship belt, TJ equipped titanium implants in his arms to give him superhuman strength. But as we know, cheaters never prosper, and TJ was caught, stripped of his titles, and forced to slink away in disgrace. Instead of giving up, TJ did what any rational person would do. He ripped the implants out of his arms and carried on fighting, determined to win fairly against every opponent in the future. What makes this so weird, though, is that afterwards, his opponents are rarely human. They're aliens, monsters, and robots. In other words, the sort of people that cybernetic implants would actually be considered fair play against. TJ Combo's skewed moral compass is ultimately what makes his backstory such an odd one, as he's clearly confused about what's considered fair in the fighting world. 
he does seem like an okay bloke though, even with the cheating, so we'll let all of this slide. Number 7. Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Fu Shaquille O'Neal is a big deal, both literally and otherwise. One of basketball's most recognisable stars, Shaq is an absolute giant of a man, and he's also, if you believe 1994's Shaq Fu, a master of the ancient art of Shaquido. Shaq Fu's story introduces its version of the real-life basketball star by explaining that he's on his way to a charity basketball match in Tokyo. For some reason, Shaq then wanders into a local dojo, where he's told he must travel to another dimension to rescue a young boy from an evil mummy. Apparently, this is all the excuse Shaq needed to ditch his charity basketball game because he immediately sets off to a place called the Second World. The character's backstory isn't exactly flattering, implying that Shaq is willing to stand up the people that presumably paid good money to see him play whilst risking his own life in the process, thus making it a possibility that those poor folks will never get to see a Shaq game. So, as if the game's countless terrible puns weren't bad enough, Shaq Fu also makes out that O'Neill doesn't care about charity. Still, at least the character's backstory is every bit as baffling as the game's weird premise implies, so Shaq Fu gets a few points for consistency. Number 6. Amingo, Marvel vs Capcom 2 If you didn't already think that Marvel and Capcom characters meeting in a fighting game sounded a little strange, then some of Marvel vs Capcom 2's characters would have certainly convinced you. Among a varied roster of fighters, one in particular stands out as the weirdest. Amingo, the alien man plant. A big bellied cactus man wearing a large sombrero, Amingo speaks exclusively by using his own name. Why is he like this? Well, his backstory offers an explanation, though it doesn't exactly go all the way to clearing things up. When a cursed wind starts killing off all plant life on Earth, Amingo sets off in search of its source. Now, even if we ignore the fact that it sounds like a setup for some particularly crude toilet humour, this is still one of the most insane backstories of all time. Why exactly an alien should be concerned with Earth's plant life is just one of many issues, and a Mingo's bizarre choice to dress like a stereotypical Mexican is also more than a little odd. Even in the context of Marvel vs Capcom, it's super weird. Cursed wind. I'm sorry, I can't hold it in anymore. It's a fart joke. Surely it's a fart joke. Number 5. Blanca. Street Fighter. He might be a staple of the Street Fighter series, but for far too long, Blanca has been the green lightning powered elephant in the room. Though Street Fighter is known more for its groundbreaking fighting mechanics than its story, it does offer some in-game explanation for why its characters are beating each other senseless. Blanca's story is a prime example. It sort of works, but doesn't make much sense, and it's really, really weird. At birth, Blanca was a happy young lad named Jimmy, but one plane crash in the jungle changed everything. For some reason, he mutated into a green-skinned feral man with lightning powers, taking on the name Blanca and learning to survive according to the rules of the jungle. The ending of Street Fighter 2 sees Blanca reunited with his birth mother, which is where he learns his birth name and how he came to find himself stranded in the wilderness. Still, the idea that a child who grew up amongst wild animals would one day decide to enter a street fighting tournament is something of a stretch. Though Street Fighter has a few weird and wonderful characters, the ambiguous nature of Blanca's supernatural powers and mutated appearance makes his story by far the franchise's strangest. Number 4. Voldo, Soul Calibur The Soul Calibur games feature a fantastically diverse cast of characters, but Voldo stands out even amongst nightmarish hell monsters and armoured lizard men. Typically dressed in an elaborate outfit made of various leather straps, Voldo is known for his unconventional fighting style. If you've ever wondered how Edward Scissorhands would fight wearing fetish gear, then Voldo might just be the character for you. For someone as unique as Voldo, this old Calibur series offers an appropriately weird backstory. Voldo was originally a servant of an Italian arms dealer who buried him alive in a pit filled with his weapons in order to guard them for all of eternity. After years spent in the deep, dark pit, Voldo lost his sight, but never wavered in his devotion to his long-dead master. He also apparently taught himself contortionism in that time. For some reason, nothing better to do, I guess. As much as it makes him employee of the century, Voldo's backstory is not as weird as the character himself. 
He's possibly the most unique fighting game character ever conceived, and it's not easy to explain away all of that weirdness with just a few narrative strokes. Still, it's an odd story for an odd character, and the enigma that is Voldo endures as a staple of the franchise. Number 3. Roger Tekken When considering the entire scope of the animal kingdom, the kangaroo is hardly an obvious choice for nature's greatest fighter. Still, Tekken's Roger is designed to be exactly that, a weaponized animalistic killing machine equipped with a sharp mind and a pair of boxing gloves. Created by Mishima Industries under the command of former child cliff diver Kazuya, Roger was one of the organization's first experimental transgenic animals. Designed to be used for military purposes, Roger failed to impress Kazuya and was written off as a failure. However, it's not Roger's start that's the weirdest part of his story, but the bizarre turns his life took as the Tekken games went on. Eventually, Roger's DNA was used to clone a dinosaur named Alex. Continued experiments on the fighting kangaroo took him away from his wife and son, but he decided to stick to his luxurious existence rather than be a father to his child. After Roger's family spent years searching for him, they discover him to be nothing more than a deadbeat marsupial dad, and decide to carry on without him. His genetic relative, Alex the Dinosaur, steps into family life and helps raise Roger Jr. instead. It's a weird story, and it's even stranger when you consider that all of this apparently explains Roger's continued role in a worldwide fighting tournament. Number 2 Dr. Boldhead slash Faust Guilty Gear The story of Guilty Gear's Dr. Boldhead is one of the most tragic in the entire fighting genre, but that really doesn't make it any less weird. Once a brilliant surgeon, Dr. Bolthead earned his reputation as one of the world's most talented healers. However, when a young girl dies mysteriously on his operating table, Bolthead is traumatized and begins a long and slow descent into madness. Bolthead is so upset about his perceived mistake that he sets off on a violent killing spree. As weird as that seems, it gets worse. He's caught and locked up then set free with a giant scalpel and told to kill as many people as he can. It's only after the Doctor learns of the conspiracy to drive him mad, and he decides to put an end to his killing ways. Renaming himself Faust and putting a paper bag on his head, he sets off in search of the truth and to save as many lives as possible. Honestly, anyone who would happily go by the name Baldhead probably should have rung alarm bells much earlier on. Then, as if a string of grisly crimes wasn't enough to prove his madness, he genuinely believes that a paper bag on his head is the equivalent of a new personality. Yikes. And number one, Jedidoma, Darkstalkers. For a series of fighting games, the Darkstalkers franchise has a pretty complex narrative, and this means that many of its characters have weird backstories. However, none of these stories stand out quite as much as that of antagonist Jeddah Doma, a nobleman, or noble demon if you want to get technical about this, who's obsessed with saving his home dimension from chaos, Jeddah decides the only way to do so is through harvesting souls. The very notion of harvesting the lives of others seems pretty evil, but Jeddah doesn't seem too concerned. He's thinking about his home after all, and feeding as many souls to the giant fetus of God that lives there. In other words, not only is Jeddah's story incredibly complicated, it's super strange, particularly where it pertains to his general plans for the universe. Generally, he's all about harvesting lives to save his home dimension, but even if you can get yourself on board with everything else in Jeddah's story, the whole giant fetus thing remains inescapably jarring. It's honestly one of the most insane stories ever told, and it's all lurking just behind the weird headdress of a self-mutilating fighting game villain. Just goes to show, you should never judge a demon by their giant soul-eating dimensional fetus, doesn't it?